compassion, loving kindness as the flood. When the prince of life, our ransom, shed for us his precious blood, who his love will not remember, who can cease to sing his praise, he can never be forgotten throughout heaven's eternal day. kingdom only and my life be to thy praise thou alone shalt be my glory nothing in the world I see thou hast cleansed and sanctified me thou thyself hast set me free in thy truth Thou dost direct me by thy spirit through thy word, and thy grace my need is meeting as I trust in thee, my Lord. Of thy fullness thou art pouring, thy great love and power on me. Without measure, full drawing out my heart to thee. Amen. 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 Take your Bible tonight. Turn to Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah 55. Sure good to be home tonight. Amen. It's real good to be home. It's real, real good to be home. Amen. There's something about the Bronx, New York, we don't get along well at all. Scary up there. Very, very scary. The Bronx, New York. You go from 3,000 feet on top of a mountain where there's just a uh, bear, and snakes, and, and then you go to the Bronx. Amen? Much more scary in the Bronx. Miss Yvette, she's going to sing for us tonight. Isaiah 55, let's look at verse 11. Isaiah 55, 11. <clears throat> Very familiar to us all. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. For ye shall go out with joy, and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth it shall not return unto me void but it shall accomplish 
that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. For ye shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands it shall not return unto me void so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth it shall not return unto me void. But it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. For ye shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. It shall not return unto me Without that promise, yes, sir. I'm not doing what I'm doing. Yeah. Without that promise. Yeah. He said it wouldn't return void. Yeah. We put it all on the line here a while back, and uh, I believe that with all my heart. Yes, sir. Yeah. When it goes out, yeah. <laughs> it don't return void. Yeah. It's a promise yeah. from the Word of God. I hang on to those, but it's tight. Get a tight grip on that, buddy. And uh, sure is good to be home tonight. And I uh, got so much. I'm scattered all over the place here. I got notes. I don't know what to say first. Amen. <laughs> I guess I was going to, uh, through this message somewhere, I'm going to give a brief testimony of some sort of what we've been doing. But um, I got so much. Um, one recent thing we've been doing is the purple. This is Miss Yvette's purple. This is reflective purple, brethren. That's reflective, amen? How about reflective purple? You must be born again. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. You must be born again. That's pretty. I like these things. I've uh, turned Miss Yvette loose on helping me be a little more creative, amen, <laughs> and expand my black and white, all right, that I had for years. And, uh, of course, that red, white, and blue, I think that's just all together lovely. Yeah. Jesus said you must be born again, are you? That's a real good question right yeah, there. Amen. So uh, we like those. So uh, pray God will help us keep doing that. Uh, we do get orders from literally all over the world. This morning we got an opportunity to put our scripture signs in uh, that brother down there. Uh, where was he going? Chile, that's the one. Um, in Chile. And, um, but we do get orders, and I want to show you this. Um, we're working on these as we speak. I even I did a couple today. Uh, this is Danish. That says, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Amen. That's going to Denmark. Um, we got a bunch of those going to Denmark. Brother Tony over there and Sister Susan, uh, they're faithful missionaries, and they are cranked up about the magnetic scripture sign ministry. There's one in Denmark. Um, uh, Except to repent, he shall all likewise perish. Now that's going to Denmark. That's a good message for Denmark, isn't it? Amen. They need that. Except to repent, he shall all likewise perish. Now this one, he also wants Germany because they're so close to Germany. Or they cross back and forth into Scandinavia. We just found out they're going into Scandinavia now, and Norway up there. Uh, 
This is Acts 16.31 in German. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. They're going to put those in their car. This brother, he is uh, winning souls to Jesus Christ with the Scripture signs. He's teaching seminars how to use magnetic Scripture signs on their cars over there. Amen. I've never heard anybody in America teach a seminar on how to use magnetic Scripture signs, but he's gathering those brethren up over there from all different parts up there. And, you know, while we have our little world here, there's a lot of things going on out there in that big world that other people are trying to win people to Jesus Christ too. And uh, we want to be a big part of that. And uh, we're trying to be by the grace of God. We've got 75 of these going to Denmark. Uh, don't know how they're going to get there yet or how, how the Lord's going to work it all out, but they're going to get there. That's John 3, 7. You must be born again in Danish. That's a beautiful verse of Scripture right there. Uh, this is Jesus saves. How about that in Danish? Never seen that before, have you? about that? And uh, what else we got here? I'm going to just uh, share with you for a moment. This is uh, Jesus uh, saves in German. About that. See, that's very similar, but a little bit different. Jesus erlost. <laughs> and uh, and uh, see, you didn't know I could speak 42 languages. How about that? That's, uh, that's are you saved in, uh, in German. This is uh, are you saved. I'm sorry, that's Danish and this is German. <laughs> this is are you saved in German. That's going over there on vehicle 75 different sign. Now we have stretched out. I don't know if I told you. I might have told you before. Um, we are making some now. We're trying to be a divorce verse and making some in uh, uh, other other versions. We do make them in NIV in case you're interested. That's Matthew 18 11 now. If you need that, we do have those still available. We've got Acts 8 37. It, it looks much like this when Acts 8 37 does. So if you want in the NIV, we've got about 15 verses we make in the NIV. Uh, so let's go well, you just study that right there. If you want the NIV, we'll make that for you. Uh, Acts 16.31. Uh, that's Spanish. Going down to, to Chile. And uh, we're going to put that down there by the grace of God. And uh, what else we have here? We got uh, Greek. How about that? Hey, Amen. That's a mess, isn't it? That's going over to Greece. We've got a bunch of in Greece. And uh, what else? Here, here we go. There's Russian. How about that? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Amen. So uh, by the grace of God, those are going to go to uh, Germany and um, in Denmark, uh, hopefully later this week. Pray about that. Uh, we got a lot going on. And um, I'm not one to sit back and be idle. And I've never been like that. By the grace of God, it's just what the Lord's called me to do. Um, I can't hardly sit still. Amen. <laughs> I get the antsies when I, when I sit still too long. I just got to do something. And uh, Miss Yvette, she always says I'm wound tighter than three or four drums. And I think it's true. I just can't help it. I got to be doing something or you'll go nuts in this life. Take your Bible tonight and try to try to uh, hang with me tonight. Turn to, um, well, I'll tell you what, before we turn there, let me give you this. I've got, got several things. I still believe in the signs and wonders. Uh, there's the signs, and they're wonderful. Uh, there's more signs. They're a wonder. Uh, Daniel said this in Daniel 4, too. I thought it good to show the signs and the wonders that the high God hath wrought toward me. So I thought it good to show you those signs and wonders. They are wonderful. They're beautiful. Amen. We've got those now, those road signs back there, and they're big and they're bold, upper and lower case, just like it is in the King James Bible. That's how we've determined to do it. The brethren can do it any way they want. I don't care. This is what I'm doing. Hey Amen. That's what God's called me to do. We're going to make them an upper lower case, just like it is in the King James Bible, and get as much power on that thing as possible. Amen. I want God to blow on it. I mean, just be pleased with what we're doing. And uh, we, we tweak it in. I got that computer tweaked in where I, I study every every letter and in between how, many, how, many, how big the space is in between each letter. And uh, adjust them big. If you look at the scripture signs, they're as big and bold as it can possibly be on that size material we got for them. And that's what we determined to do, make it real readable. If they can't read it, it don't do anybody any good at all. So they've got to be able to read the Word of God, and we're going to tweak them in the best we can. I get things literally from all over the world, um, uh, different brothers, some of these old guys, they sit around, I don't think they got anything else to do. But uh, they send me this stuff. This, uh, this guy sent me this. this you'll enjoy this. Uh, he says this, this is so strange. Did you know that the word race car spelled backwards still spells race car? <laughs> Think about that a minute. That's the truth. Did you know that eat is the only word that if you take the first letter and move it to the last, it still sp it spells as past tense eight? That's interesting. How about this one? Have you ever noticed that if you rearrange the letters in illegal immigrants and just add a few more letters, it spells out, go home, you freeloading, benefit grabbing, pig, kid producing, violent, non English speaking thieves, and take those hairy faced, sandal wearing, bomb making, goat loving, rag headed camel jockeys with you? How weird is that? Hey man, that's pretty good, isn't it? 
That's pretty well. Some just little strange handfuls of purpose there I, I get from these guys. Uh, I don't have a lot of time. I'm telling you, I, I get I get so busy in the work of the ministry and making scripture signs, and uh, even up till today, I uh, uh, don't have a lot of time to read. I love to read, love to read the Word of God, love to read different books, but I got a few short books here you want to pick up. Uh, maybe you've not seen these before. Things I Did to Deserve the Nobel Peace Prize by Barack Obama. That's a short book. Amen. You want to read a good short book? I got several here. Things I Love About My Country by Jane Fonda Michelle Obama, illustrated by Michael Moore. That's a real short book. If you're looking for short, little, tiny books, here's a good one. My Christian Accomplishments and How I Helped After Katrina by the Reverend Jesse Jackson, Reverend Al Sharpton. That's a short book. Here's one. How about this? Things I Love About Bill by Hillary Clinton. That's a short book, brother. That won't take you long to read it all. There's a sequel to that that has come out. Things I Love About Hillary by Bill Clinton. That's a short book. Won't take you long to read it all. Things I Cannot Afford by Bill Gates. Short book, brother. He ain't going to take you long to read that. Good Things I've Done for America by Barack Obama. He's writing another one there. A collection of motivational speeches by Dr. Jack Kevorkian. Yeah. That's a good short book. You want a short book? Uh, the Amish phone book. That's a good short book. If you want to read that. Uh, My Plans to Find the Real Killers by Dr. O.J. Simpson. That's a short book right there. How, how to Drink and Drive Safely by Ted Kennedy. That is a short book, brother. If you're looking for just short, My Complete Knowledge of Military Strategy. Strategies by Nancy Pelosi. That's a short book. Won't take you long to read that at all. Uh, I get these things from all over. These guys just shoot. I just pop in. Some of them I just delete them and get rid of them and move on. But others are pretty good. Hey, Amen. How about this? And last one, we'll get to going into the message here. Uh, the 25 top things you'll never hear a southern boy say. Did I tell you about that one time or another? You've not heard the 25 top things you'll never hear a southern boy say. Number one, when I retire, I'm moving north. Yeah. Never hear a southern boy say that. Amen. Uh, how about this one? I just love to read Shakespeare. Never. Are you going to hear a southern? Duct tape won't fix that. Never. You're going to never hear a southern fella. Hey, we don't keep firearms in this house. Never. You're going to hear a southern boy say that. No, never. Uh, we can't feed that to the dog. Nope. You never hear a southern guy say that. No kids in the back of the pickup is just not safe. Hey, man, you'll never hear a southern fella say that. How about this? Wrestling is fake. No, never. We're vegetarians. Nope, you'll never hear a southern guy say that. Do you think my gut is too big? Never, brother. You'll never hear a southern. I'll have grapefruits and grapes instead of biscuits and gravy. Never. Honey, we don't need another dog. Nope, never hear a southern boy say that. How about that? Who cares who won the Civil War? <laughs> no, brother, never, never hear a southern. Hey, give me a small bag of pork rinds. Nope, never hear a southern boy say that. Too many deer heads to track from the decor. Nope, I just couldn't find it at Walmart today. Never hear a southern boy say that. Trim the fat off that steak. Never hear a southern boy say that. Checkmate. Never, brother. <laughs> you guys. No, brother. You never hear him say that. Amen. I'll pass on the jerky, thank you. <laughs> never, brother. I made jerky yesterday, buddy. <laughs> it's good to smoke it. Amen. I can do that while I'm making sign. Get that smoker fired up. And boy, I'll tell you what, it's a big time on the mountain. Amen. Hey, I even got a verse on it. I forget what it is, but it's a good verse on making jerk jerky. <laughs> hey, man, I hope you're still laughing when we get done tonight. <laughs> Take your Bible and turn there to uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Hey, man, some of you got a sneaking suspicion where we're going tonight. Amen. Got lots of needs, and you pray about all that. Got vinyl and fluorescent stuff and coroplast and magnet and cutters and things we need and software. Now you just pray for us. We plan on taking this whole thing another step up. I'm not backing off, brother. Amen. Not one little bit. I never preached this one before. You help me. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, let's look at verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Amen. Did I get that on, brother? 
green book? No. It's green now. Don't want to miss the rest of that verse. <laughs> That's too good. <laughs> For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we were much alive. This is the first, I just want to interject this here. This is the first portion of Scripture this lost man, when I was lost, had ever laid his eyes on. This is where God showed me to. I opened up the Bible, and this is where I began to read. Amen. Verse 14, I want to read again. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Obviously, this is a portion of Scripture talking about the rapture of the body of Jesus Christ. And uh, that, that portion of Scripture right there is enough to keep me going until Jesus comes back. Amen. If that's all there was in the Bible, if there's nothing else, no other verse of Scripture, if that's all we had, that promise right there, brother, that's enough right there to keep me stirred up, brother, till Jesus Christ comes back and takes us out of here. Uh, to, to think of me being shut up through this sky to meet Jesus Christ in the clouds in the air, brother. Uh, there's something wrong with you, friend. If that don't uh, turn your crank just a little bit and stir you up just for a little while, I mean, uh, set down all the junk in the life and just forget about that. But if you just think about you being elevated, lifted up off this earth and is floating through the sky, shooting like a rocket, amen, to meet Jesus Christ in the clouds, brother, that's not just some kind of uh, fictional story there, friend. That's the truth thing right there, brother. That is going to happen someday soon. Yes, now, First Corinthians, uh, First Corinthians chapter 15, I want to see that. Let's read there. Let's read there. <laughs> Verse 51. Yeah. Those are good verses. That's exciting verses. 1 Corinthians 15, uh, verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Amen. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. Now look what it says. And we shall be Changed. Let's go to the Lord and we're prayer. Father, we're thankful tonight for the Word of God and the reading of it. Father, I'm sure uh, eternally grateful, God, for uh, leaving these passages of Scripture here and putting them in the Word of God. A great promise we got to look forward to. Lord, uh, in this world, God, it's sometimes hard to look forward to a whole lot. But Lord, uh, uh, according to that verses right there in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and 1 Corinthians chapter 15, there's a promise that you're coming back to get us out of this life. Father, I pray that tonight... You'll help it to be real to us tonight. Help us to learn what you have for us tonight from the, the preaching of the Word of God. Help me tonight, I pray. I need you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, tonight I got to read them a portion of Scripture there a while back. And, um, of course, I read them all the time. Got them marked and highlighted and underlined. I don't think you could uh, highlight and underline it any more than what I have. Uh, I got that word mystery highlighted. I got the word we shall uh, highlighted there. And uh, I got different notes and different uh, uh, references there. But it says there, we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, the last trump. Then it says, uh, we shall be changed. And I want to say this tonight, that um, uh, there's something about me that just loves this world. And uh, if you're honest with yourself, you're the same way. Hey Amen. I mean, uh, we're all just no good bunch of uh, dirty, rotten uh, dirt banks. And uh, there's something inside every, I mean, uh, nobody here has attained to the place where your flesh doesn't enjoy this life to a certain extent. And I find that my flesh tends to want to enjoy this life more than, uh, more than I want to sometimes. But uh, if the truth be known, there's things about this life, the world and the world stuff uh, I like. I, I, I like to hunt. And I, if, I, if you just, if I, if I can allow myself a the Lord would let me, I could set everything aside and hunt all the time. Yeah. I like to hunt, amen. I like to kill deer. Yeah. Kill them dead, amen. And uh, I like to kill other things too, but uh, I like to kill deer. And uh, I like to hunt, I like to fish, 
I like to eat fish. I like to do all that kind of thing. I like fun stuff. I like to eat. Amen. I, I like to eat food and stuff like that. My flat, now you're the same way. Amen. If we were all totally uncontrolled, we'd all be about 450 pounds. Yeah. If I could just have it my way, amen, I would be a large, large individual tonight. Uh, I love I loved, uh, pecan praline ice cream and Pringles and payday uh, candy bar and peanuts and popcorn. I love all that kind of thing. And you do too, some of you. You like Snickers. You may not like it in that particular order, but you like different things too. If I could turn some of you loose on a strawberry pie with whipped cream on it, it'd be gone in a heartbeat. Amen. If I could turn some of you loose on uh, peanut butter, a chocolate chip ice cream with caramel drizzled all over it, brother, you just uh, bury your face in that bowl. You'll not lift your head till it's completely gone. Don't tell me you don't uh, have things in this life that you like. Hey, if I were to pull in a brand new shiny Mercedes Benz out there and say it's yours, oh, buddy, uh, you t- there'd be no scripture signs going on that, baby. I'll tell you, I uh, yeah, I'll tell you what, there's things that you like. That there's things that uh, by nature, human nature, we love in this life. And it's because of those things that I got to uh, somehow, by the grace of God, uh, there's something about me that loves those things, the world, the flesh, and the things of the world. Yes, that's right. But there's someone in me that longs and loves for the next world. And the Bible says it's Christ in you. And I want to be changed tonight. I don't want to stay the same. I I don't want to. I always enjoy the things of the world. There's something inside me, someone that has come inside me that uh, the Bible says it's Christ in you. It's Jesus. I want to be changed tonight uh, because of uh, a few different things. uh, uh, One of them is the disappointments in this life. I I want to be changed. I want to go to heaven. I can't wait for that rapture to hit. Say why? Because of the disappointments disappointments in this life. Uh, uh, wife, your husband's going to disappoint you and, and uh, husband, your wife's going to disappoint you. Uh, kids, your, your parents are going to disappoint you and uh, parents, your kids are going to disappoint you. I want to be changed because of some of those things. I want to be changed because uh, I'll just be honest with you and uh, I'm going to stick my neck out right here because of some of the church members I have to hang around. Amen. Now, I'm not particularly talking about just this church because we travel to, to all kinds of different churches out there and I've never seen sometimes a bunch of more dead head uh, Baptist brass in all my life. Amen. Uh, God's given him so much blessings on this life. Brother, I want to be changed because I'm tired of some of the church members I got to hang around. Amen. I don't understand how somebody can't get stirred up over the, the uh, preaching of the word of God, brother. I'll tell you what, it just bothers me to no end. I get the, I want to be changed because of the disappointments in this life. The government, the news, and the freaks and the fruits. Amen. I'm tired of those freaks and the fruits, brother. I just I don't know how much more I can take of seeing some some guy kiss another man. I tell you what, brother, there's something about that that just makes me want to throw up, brother. There's something about that that makes me want to just uh, leave and be changed, amen, and cut out of here. There's something about uh, thinking about that kind of a, uh, the abomination, brother. Uh, I get sick and tired of the, the, the death penalty uh, uh, controversy, you know, that kind of thing, brother. I think they ought to make an uh, electric couch, amen, and start electrocuting a whole bunch of them boys at one time. But I'll tell you what, why they haven't taken that guy from the, uh, the Aurora uh, cinema out there and just taking and shot that guy right square in the head in the middle of the of downtown Arizona, brother. There's something wrong. They saw the guy do it. There's hundreds of witnesses out, but he's got to have a fair and speedy trial, brother. I'm tired of the disappointments in this life. I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed in the government. But what do you expect? It's the last days. Perilous times shall come, brother. It's no shock to the Bible believer, but I'm disappointed in them. It's not the America we used to know, man. We used to know a different America. I'm tired of the battle of pressing on sometimes. Get tired of just pressing on, brother. You know, uh, the magnetic scripture sign ministry never stops, amen. You know, it started, I don't know, uh, coming up on 30 years now. You know, those scripture signs never stop coming in. You think about that, brother. That's enough to drive you a little bit crazy, amen. See, now we understand a little bit why you are like you are, brother. They never stop, brother. Morning, noon, and night, brother. My phone rings all the time. I get emails. I get a uh, post office box. I thank God for it. Don't get me wrong, but brother, I'll tell you what. Uh, sometimes I just want to be changed and move on up, amen, to, to, to see my Savior, Jesus Christ. Because of the day-to-day battle of pressing on, it gets hard. 
I want to be changed because I want to see him as he is. Yeah. Revelation 1 12, the, the Bible says, John said, I, and I turned to see the voice that spake with me and being turned. You see, John had to turn. He had to change his direction and turn and take a look at what God had for him and see something different. He had to change his direction and change his way. And when he looked, he saw something that God wanted him to see. And he's not going to see it until he's been changed. How about you? I want to see him as he is. I want to be where he is in my father's house. I want to go home. Yeah. I'm always wanting to go home. I guarantee you up there in uh, the Bronx, New York, I want to go home. Yeah. That ain't where I want to be. That's where I'm at now. I want to be changed because I want to be where he is in my father's house. Amen. It's coming. Do you want to be changed? Yes. Amen. We'll see if you want to be changed before we get done tonight. I want to be changed because I want to be like he is. David said this in Psalm 17, verse 15, As for me, I will behold, his, uh, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness, with thy likeness. Yeah. Psalm 55, verse 6, And I said, Oh, that I had wings like a dove, uh, for then would I fly away and be at rest. Hey, there's something wrong with you if you don't want to be changed, brother. Uh, there's something wrong with you if you don't want to see him as he is. There's something bad wrong with you if you don't want to be where he's at. There's something bad wrong with you, friend. If you don't want to be changed, if you don't want to be like he is, brother, there's something to me that I know is just desperately wicked friend. There's some, some part of me that I know. It strays from the path of God. It strays from the direction of God. And I, I want to be changed from that someday. I want to be like he is. I want to be like he is right now. I don't want to wait to be like he is. I want to be like he is right now. Uh, he's like a mighty lion protected in his domain. That's what I want to be like. He's like a shepherd searching for that one lost sheep. That's what I want to be like. He's like a lighthouse providing light in the dark times of our life. I want to be like that. Uh, I want to be like he is. I want to be like a, a life preserver rescuing the drowning and drifting soul in the storms of life. Amen, He's all the joy we have all the day long. He's the faith we lack each day. He's the comfort to the concern. He's the healer to those that are of a, a broken heart. He's the resurrection and the life. He is the Word of God. Yes. That's what I want to be like. Amen. I want to be like Jesus. I want to say this. Thank God. I like being around my church family. I like being around the brethren. It says there, we sh one place says there in 1 Corinthians, uh, Corinthians chapter 15, says we shall be changed. Then right above it there in 51, it says we shall all be changed. Yeah. That means Jack Butts. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's still Libertarian Dave Cross. Amen. Yeah. Oh! shall be changed. Amen. I mean someday we're all going to be changed. If, if you're saved and born again you're going to be changed. The question is do you want to be changed right now or not? Amen. That's the question of the night. Do you want to be changed right now? Now I want to be changed and go to heaven. That's what I'm talking about. But I wrote this down if I have to wait to be changed to go there I want to be changed to live here. Yeah. I just had a a granddaughter, first one. They call them grand. They're grand. Isn't that right, sister? She's just smiling over here. Them, them grandbabies are grand. Her name's Kimber. And I told Candace, if you weren't going to name her a Christian name, name her after my gun. Amen? So she did. Called her Kimber. That's my gun. And uh, she said, Dad, if, I'm not, if I wasn't going to name her uh, Kimber, if it was going to be a boy, she's going to name him Colt. That's okay, too. I like that. And she said, Dad, if we're going to have kid, uh, twins, we're going to name them Smith and Wesson. I said, Amen, baby. That's, that's, that's what I want you to do right there. But uh, she had one, one little girl named Kimber. Now that little Kimber... And um, this is the, the light of our life, part of you know, our little world, our little me and Misty Beth, that's kind of our big shining light right now. Yeah. That little baby. Yeah. There's nothing like having a little baby that, that the, you're a part of, amen. And there she is, there's little Kimber, but little Kimber has a set of lungs on her. Yeah. Now daddy's over in Afghanistan, he's fighting the war over there. My son-in-law. So when I'm there around Kimber, I'm daddy. Hey, man, I just take that role. But actually, when I talk to Kimber, I say, say, Grandpa, 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 say, Grandpa. I'm going to train that kid her first word. It's going to be Grandpa. Now, I mean, I don't tell nobody that, but that's what I do. But that little baby, she's got a set of lungs on her. 
And she's got such a set of lungs on her that the Candace has said that, uh, Dad, uh, I don't know what to do with her. She cries all the time, it seems like. And she's called me, and we miss Yvette. She calls her all the time. Says, what am I going to do? She cries. And uh, she said, uh, she, I said, well, what, what? tell me about it. She said, Dad, it's like a pterodactyl. <laughs> she said, she goes, in the background, and she's right. She does sound just like a pterodactyl, brother. I'll tell you what, it's a frightening sound with Kimber. Man, I'll tell you what, uh, she wants to be changed, friend. Uh, she, that, that's just the problem right there. Uh, most of the time, uh, that little baby just wants to be changed, and brother, uh, she's laying in a mess, amen. It's the mess that she made. Uh, she just wants to be changed, friend. But uh, it's funny how God's people don't want to be changed. Amen. She wants to be changed, and you get done changing that little baby. All is well. Yeah. <laughs> There's a calm come over her. And there's just one little thing. She just wanted to be changed. Say why? So she could kick them legs one more time. So she could run one more time. And friend, I got to thinking, uh, that's how I am, friend. I get to crying and moaning and complaining. And I get to rat to God, amen. And giving God the old complaint, amen. The old belly grubs. And it's just because I, I, I got some junk in my life. I need to change in my life. And I want to get it out. And once I get that junk out, I can run once again for Jesus Christ. Christ. She wants to be changed. Say why? So she can feel clean. And I put it down in the southern vernacular and be happy, happy, happy. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's why she wants to be changed. And you can't be happy, happy, happy until you get changed, friend. Uh, there's something inside you. There's some part of you right now where God's touching it. Uh, his magic, his, his big finger there and say, uh, you need to change that or you'll never be happy in this life. You'll never be satisfied. You'll never feel clean yeah. until you get changed. And you need to be changed. I noticed this about Kimber. She gets the attention of the Father when she wants to be changed. Just let that little rascal scream about 2 a.m. Mama's too tired. You know who come running in a normal home? The Father come running. I remember Candace and Steve days little and I'd go running in there and change them little babies and I didn't mind a bit. I really didn't. They just need to be changed. And it was the father that had to do it because they couldn't do it themselves. I mean, they knew that there was something wrong. They knew something bad. Amen. Something bad had gone wrong in their little life. They knew something had gone south, literally, amen, in their life. And they knew that, they, hey, friend, they just had to be changed. And they couldn't do it themselves. They knew that there was a real need, amen. And it was the father that had to come in and make that change in their life. But they had to recognize it. Maybe you need to be born again. Jesus Christ will make that change. Yeah. Yeah. And guess what? He don't mind changing you. Right. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. He pities you. Yeah. But you got to want to be changed. I want to say this. We're going to park here just for a little bit. When she gets changed at night, right back to sleep in the dream world. That's where we're losing it tonight. We want to be changed. And we get changed. But then you forget that part about going into that dream world. Yeah. And uh, you let the Father change you, you can go right back to dreaming. But there's probably something in your life tonight that won't let you dream like you ought to be dreaming. Yeah. You haven't wanted to be changed yet. Now, I, I like dreaming. I dream about things all the time. Now we dream. I'm going to park here just for a little bit. Now be, be patient with me. I heard a guy preach on dreaming here a while back, Brother Butts. And I got to thinking about this thing about a dream. And we all dream, right? Isn't that right? We all dream. Yeah, silly, senseless dreams. Isn't that right? Most of the time they're silly, senseless dreams. We all have them. Miss Yvette, she even, I mean, look how sweet she is. Everybody dreams, amen. And uh, Miss Yvette, she dreamed one night here about three or four months ago. And uh, she was dreaming there. And uh, now sometimes, normally when you dream, you twitch a little bit. I mean, you know, your, your partner there, your wife or your husband, I'll say it like that, amen. Your wife or your husband there. And uh, you know what I'm saying there. 
Leave me alone on that. I didn't I slip, all right? <laughs> Devil's trying to mess me up, amen? <laughs> but they, you know when there's something going on, their eyes will twitch a little bit or their arms will twitch a little bit. You know that they're dreaming. You know that your spouse is dreaming right there. And, uh, but that didn't happen the night she dreamed. 2 a.m. in the morning, pitch black. She sits up. There's a man at the foot of the bed. Hubby, there's a man at the foot of the bed. There's a man right there. Brother, she was dreaming just as sure as you're sitting there. Man, the lights were out, pitch black. She said, there's a man at the foot of the bed. And she jumped over my arm right there. And I tried, man, brother, I'll tell you what. I, I've never been so frightened in all my life. I went to grab my gun on my table there. I got three lights in the house, two on this front end of the gun, and one there on the front, on the bottom, on the, on the, on the barrel side there. I grabbed that little laser, and I was shooting that laser all over that room looking for that dude at the foot of the bed. <laughs> but, he said, but she was just having a dream is all she was doing. We all dream. My old dog, Pearl, man, she would dream. And uh, man, that old dog would have, yeah, I mean, she would have nightmares. Black dog, he was chasing her. Man, I'd wake up and I'd, man, that old dog would be over there in the corner. That dog would be going, hoo, 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 hoo. and that dog's leg would be kicking like that. Man, she had a mean look on her face. She's chasing black doggy, I'm sure. And she's having a bad dream. We all have bad dreams, but you know what? We all have good dreams too. Yeah. And old Pearl, I woke up one night and that dog was doing this. I heard that in the middle of the night. Her tail's wagging. That crazy dog is having a happy dream. She's got a big smile on her face. That tail's going like that. That dog is absolutely sound asleep. She's dreaming. I dreamed a couple dreams and uh, silly senseless dreams. I dreamed, man, I was, I was up about 5,000 feet in an airplane. And... Uh, I like to fly a little bit when I get time to or we would get to go somewhere special and but I was going to jump out and friend uh, I, and my dream was so clear you ever have dreams you like man I've had dreams I, I just love this dream I was getting ready to jump out of that airplane and I, I had my goggles on you've seen those pictures of those guys with them goggles on and the wind's going by and you're staying he's getting ready to jump out that plane man I'm going to jump out that plane I got my parachute but my parachute wasn't a normal parachute my parachute was a Walmart bag strapped to my chest it had them little <laughs> floppy wings on it with the little hand were. I've got my parachutes flopping right there and I leap brother. I leap and I'm drifting down through there and you've seen those guys. Man you see the patchwork quilt down there. Man my, my dream was so beautiful. I was flying down there my, my little Walmart bag was flopping like that and I'm flying like that down through that space. Man I'm just drifting through there like a bird. Man I always wanted to fly like a bird and I land on the ground. Got my goggles on and my Walmart bag just falls off onto the ground. I made it home safe. And you know what? I wanted to jump right back into that dream. We all dream senseless dreams. Beautiful dream. Brother Bruce McDowell up there in, up there in Sinking Spring, Ohio, he had a dream one night. He was dreaming that uh, he had this big old witch chasing him. Now he's a big burly Marine. He's a big old tough guy back in the Marine. Man, he was in the Marine years ago. And uh, he said, Brother Schlecky, I was dreaming a dream when, uh, man, he said, I had this old witch. He said she was a witch just that like out of the Wizard of Oz. She had a big pointy hat on and a big brim. She had a big old crook nose and a big wart around the end of her nose. She was on a broom chair chasing old Bruce McDowell. He said, Brother Schlechty, she was on that broom. She had the man a jet stream flying out of the back of her broom. She was coming after me and I'm running. He said, man, I got to thinking, you know what? I'm a big bad Marine. I'm going to turn and face my fears. So he turned and faced this old witch in his dream, chasing him. He said, come on, baby, let's go out. And he grabbed her by the throat and said, die, witch, die, witch, die, witch. And friend, about that time, Sherry, his wife smacked him and said, Bruce, get off of me. Get your hands off my throat. Brother, he had grabbed his wife by the throat saying, die witch, you're going down tonight witch. She said, I'm not a witch. Brother, I'll tell you what, I don't care how big of a bad marine you are, you got some explaining to do, brother. <laughs> it's a bad dream right there, friend. We all dream dreams. We have senseless dreams and silly dreams. But brother, we forget about dreaming and doing something for God. Yeah. And we can't do them because we've not been changed. Yeah. There's something in your life that won't allow you to dream of doing something for God. Yeah. There's something there. Amen. And brother, there's lots to do for Jesus Christ. I've done sold this a million places. Man, somebody could take all these little stupid envelopes we get. Gallery collection of some sort. City bank, new card membership. There's new account processing center. There's Discover, brother. Man, they must have, Al Gore must hate this place. They got more trees than anybody I know. They send out their junk mail. Amen. There's their paper. And I, man, all, but all those have a, no postage necessary of mail in the United States. I collect them all. Put a gospel track in each one. 
Got me a little dream going. Put me a little gospel track in there. If they're stupid enough to send me their bunch of junk mail, brother, I'm smart enough to put a gospel track in there and stick the thing back in the mailbox and let some lost soul open that thing, brother. That's a dream. Hey, somebody could have a whole ministry. One of you guys right here could have a ministry of taking all those envelopes from everybody all over Trinity Baptist Church and then just sending out hundreds of them and thousands of them. Put Brother Jack Bus phone number on it. And see what happens, amen. Never know. I was in a meeting in North Carolina. But you can't do that. Because you haven't been changed. Yeah. I was in North Carolina. And this brother come up to me and he said, Brother, I got an idea. These are little cute.